Hello, I'm Cheryl. Welcome to my sewing room. If you have been following my videos, you know by now that I love easy, quick, low-cost projects to decorate my home. I like quick because it gives me instant gratification. I love color and when you come to my home, it is very colorful. So I want to ask you, are you a beige person? In other words, is everything in your home beige and brown? I'm here to help you come out of your shell and put something colorful in your home that will reflect your personality. So I'm going to show you how to embellish your table runner that will show that personality of yours. Here are some suggestions on how to use jewels, buttons, and my favorite, ribbons, and a variety of other trims. So let's play. Okay. Over here I have this beautiful table runner that's got blues and greens in it and it has a very distinct pattern. So it's got all these great little shades of blue, a few shades of green and cream. I selected blue beaded fringe to put at the end to reflect the blue colors in this runner. Now, in order to bring out more of the blues in the runner, I wanted to put a few more jewels on the end. So you want to look at your patterns when picking jewels. This is an oval shape here, so I selected an oval shaped button. Now, at the end, or excuse me, a jewel, it's not a button, at the end of each point here it has holes so that you can use a needle and thread to stitch it onto your fabric. Now you can glue them on so you would put glue on the back and then place it down wherever you want it. So when you go to your craft store read the label to make sure you're using the correct type of glue that works with your fabric and jewels. So let's just do a really simple pattern with these jewels. Here is, we're just going to do a straight line all the way across. That's all we're going to do. We're going to keep it really, really simple. Okay, and you just kind of evenly spread them out. That doesn't look bad, but somehow it just still doesn't work quite well with the fabric. You can leave it that way, but I think we can do a little more. Let's try something else. So you can put jewels together where they kind of kiss each other at the ends, bring them in, and you could do a row of something like this. Okay, now it's okay, it's still not doesn't do much for me, not on this particular fabric. So I'm going to try something else. Let's try making a flower. Okay, you're just going to bring them close, put them in a circle, okay, something like that. If you're going to do a flower pattern, I would put another jewel in the center, either one of the greens or even a crystal clear one. Now. This is okay, but I still didn't feel it worked very well with this fabric. So let me show you what I did do on the other end. Okay, like I said, I selected an oval jewel because it has these oval shapes in the pattern and the fabric. So I placed a jewel in the center. I did three rows of these alternating them. I think this works the best with this fabric. I really like how it turned out. Okay, let's go on over and let's talk about buttons. Okay, here I have orange fabric with cream colored polka dots. It's really cute, a very casual, whimsical type of fabric. So to reflect the circles, the polka dots, I chose white circled buttons large ones. This adds a little touch of whimsy to the runner. When stitching these on, consider using orange, fred, uh, orange thread and do a crisscross type of stitch. So go back and forth this way a few times and back and forth this way. So it looks like you have a little X. So you're bringing the orange fabric into the button. So you have everything 
working well together. Let's try another one. Here are some orange flowered buttons. Now this is a darker orange, so they show up on this fabric really well. But if you still want to bring that polka dot in, consider putting some white, but white circular buttons in the middle. This again is very cute. You could use any color of thread, either the cream or the orange on these buttons here. Let me show you one more choice. Here are four heart buttons and you can put them in kind of a circular pattern. Put an orange button in the middle so it almost looks like a little flower. Okay, I think that's really cute. That would also work very well on this runner. Again, I would use orange uh, thread on these large white heart buttons to bring in the orange from the fabric. Now, as far as the variety of buttons, there's multiple shapes. There's stars, squares, triangles, rectangles. There's also buttons with print on it and you can get them in coordinating packages of the same color but it has a little different pattern. These buttons have uh, polka dots and stripes. I buy my buttons usually in these large craft packages. This package cost me about six dollars at a discount store. It has every size of star and multiple colors in it. I also buy my buttons in large containers like this. You can see I love my buttons and this is only a few of the buttons that I have. Here we have a variety of sizes in purple, blue, pink, green, orange, and yellow. So these are some great suggestions for working with buttons. Okay, now I'm going to talk a little bit about trims. But before we go into detail, I want to remind you that your buttons and your jewels go on after your table runner is completed. So you sew them or glue them on after this, all of the sewing is done for the runner. But when you're working with trims, you put those on during the sewing process, not after it's all done. Here are some different sizes of rickrack and colors. Here is some flower trim. And then there are a variety of sizes and shapes and prints for ribbons. There are thousands of choices out there. So let's go over some of the things that you can do with your ribbons and other trims. This particular fabric has green at each end. At each end there's a piece of green and there's a seam here at each end. You can put buttons at the end of this, okay? And that looks good just like that. You don't necessarily need to add anything else. But let's look at adding this golden brown ribbon. It kind of goes with this golden brownish green that's in this pattern here, this leaf pattern. If you're going to stitch this on, you want to stitch along this edge here as close as possible, about a sixteenth of an inch in. Let's look at some rickrack. Here is some super size. Here we go. Rickrack, very large rickrack. Rick Rack can kind of curl up a little bit on the edges, so if you want, you could sew along the edge here. It's going to take you a little time, but if you go slow, you can get all the way down. You could sew on both sides. Or you could just do a single row of stitching down the center, but I would do a little test piece first. Always work on another piece of fabric when you're working with trims to see how it's going to go. Let me show you one more option for this particular runner. Let's put the ribbon back down, the brown ribbon, then lay the rickrack over the edge, and then more rickrack on the other edge. Look at all the character that all of these things together add to this runner. It's a one of a kind. No one else will have one like it. So this is a great little suggestion for this particular runner. You could use either one of these 
or all of them together. It's up to you. It's your runner. You want it to reflect your personality. So let's look at some more rickrack. This particular runner has seven pieces of fabric. So that would mean five seams. So in this fabric is pinks, blues, greens, yellows, and greens. So I chose some supersized jumbo rickrack. And this is pink. So you could put this at each one of the five seams. Or if you don't like the pink, you could do blue. That looks good too. Or to change it up even more, you could use both and alternate it. Blue, pink, blue, pink, all the way down the runner. So those are some choices for you. Let's look at this cute owl fabric. I absolutely love this. As soon as I saw this, I grabbed it off the shelf, quickly ran over to the cutting table and had them give me some because I just loved it so much. Didn't know what I was going to make out of it, but I had to have it. It's called an addiction. Okay, in this owl fabric are a few shades of pink. I chose one of those shades and then I selected some pink fabric that has these circles in it. It reflects the circles of the eyes and the circle in the flowers. So I chose black ribbon with white polka dots and placed it over the seam. Then I stitched along this edge with black thread on each side. Just an adorable piece of fabric. So let's look at this same fabric and change it up just a little bit. Now if you will notice this edge here is round. Okay, I haven't showed you how to do this yet, but a video coming out really soon, I will show you how to do it. So my video is called How to Make a Table Runner Pointed and Round. Okay, great video. Now, I chose black and white polka dot fabric to put on each end of the runner and chose pink ribbon with white polka dot to put along the seam. So I first laid the ribbon down, okay? And then I stitched along this line here to secure the ribbon. When you go to put your beaded fringe on, beaded fringe is very slippery and heavy and it'll slip out quite easily. So get your ribbon stitched down on one side. Then once you do that, then you can just push your beaded fringe in there, okay? Push it in there and make sure you leave a little bit of clearance for your seam allowance. Then take your piping foot and stitch along this edge right here. See how cute this is? This is just clear crystal beads. It adds so much personality to, the rest, to this runner. Now I don't know who's gonna get this runner, but I know one thing, Everybody in my family, and including my neighbors and friends, love my gift. So I'm sure I'm going to find a taker for this particular runner. All right, let me show you how to create patterns in your runner with all of these trims. This is a purple fabric, and it's got little flowers all over it. I even use the same flower pattern on the back. Okay, I put a ruffle at one end. But let me show you how I created this crisscross pattern. I first took just regular cream colored ribbon and then I took the rickrack and placed it down the center. I secured it down with a few pins and then did a single line of stitching down the center. The reason why I put the cream ribbon on it is it helps to make the purple rickrack stand out more and it adds a little more interest to the runner itself. So let me show you how to create this particular crisscross pattern. You're going to take your top fabric, whatever top fabric you want to use, and you're going to fold it in half. All right? Then you're going to fold it in half again, like that. Then you're going to go to each corner here and just finger press as hard as you can 
to purposely put a crease in there, okay? You can press it out later, but right now we want that crease in there. And the reason we want the crease is it's going to give us our start and stop points for the rickrack. Okay, that way you don't have to mark your fabric with special fabric pencil or ink. You know, you don't need it. So then you're going to take your first strip of rickrack and put it, excuse me, I picked up the wrong rickrack. Here it is over here. And you're going to put it across like that. So you're going to start in one quarter and go to your first little crease. Then you're going to take your next strip of rickrack, overlap it there, go down to your next crease. Okay, now you have the start of your little zigzag. You're going to continue doing that all the way down the runner till you get to the very end. When you're done, it's going to look like this. Okay, you can see this zigzag pattern. Now to complete the crisscross, you're going to take another strip of rickrack, go in the, this corner here, go down to this crease that's in the middle, and do a single line of stitches all the way down. And then take your next piece of rickrack, go down to the center, and do a single line of stitches. And keep repeating this all the way down the runner till you get to the end. So let me show you what it looks like when you've got all of that stitched on. Here's what it'll look like, okay? Now if you want to put fringe or ruffles or beads at the end, now is when you would put it on after you've done your rickrack trim. Then you would pin whatever trim you're going to do at the very end. Then put on your bottom fabric, get it all lined up properly, and by the way, if I'm going really fast for some of you, watch my video, How to Make a Table Runner, and I go into great detail on how to do a basic table runner. So then, after you've got your bottom fabric, pin it all the way around, leave an opening on one side, and then start here and do your stitching, a half inch seam allowance, all the way around, then take your scissors or rotary cutter and trim off your corners. Then turn it inside out. Pin and press all the edges and then do your top stitching. Okay? So I don't know who's going to get this one, but somebody, a close friend or family member, will probably wind up with this runner too. These suggestions that I have given you are not your only options. It's just a drop in the bucket as to what is available to you. Visit your sewing craft store and look at all the choices you have. It is so much fun. Well, I hope I have stirred up your creative juices. I really enjoy doing this. It is truly fun for me and I enjoy sharing it with you. If you have never sewn anything before, watch my video, How to Make a Table Runner. You will learn all of the basic steps required to complete a runner. My future videos will be How to Make a Table Runner Pointed and Round and how to use decorative stitching. To keep informed on all of my videos, click on subscribe. I'm Cheryl. I hope you enjoyed visiting my sewing room. See you next time. Happy sewing.